Welcome everyone on this fifth Sunday of Easter. Our opening hymn is All People That On Earth Do Dwell. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, my sisters and brothers, let's prepare ourselves by calling to mind our sins, always recalling the fact of their forgiveness made possible by Easter. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Christe, Christe, eleison. Christe, Christe, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let's celebrate our forgiveness. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to the Father, to him be glory for ever, to him be glory for ever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to Christ Jesus, glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus, to him be glory forever, to him be glory forever, alleluia, amen, alleluia, amen, alleluia, amen, alleluia, amen. God, glory to God, 
Glory to the Spirit, to him be glory for ever, to him be glory for ever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, look upon us with love. You redeem us and make us your children in Christ. Give us true freedom and bring us to the inheritance you promised. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, and we continue the very early history of the Church. Here though, Saul, Saul the great oppressor of the early Christians, has converted. He's seen the truth of Christ. But, as the human beings, the other disciples are very suspicious of him and his motives. When Saul got to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. They could not believe he was really a disciple. Barnabas, however, took charge of him, introduced him to the apostles, and explained how the Lord has appeared to Saul and spoken to him on his journey, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Saul now started to go round with them in Jerusalem, preaching fearlessly in the name of the Lord. But after he had spoken to the Hellenists and argued with them, they became determined to kill him. When the brothers knew, they took him to Caesarea and sent him off from there to Tarsus. The churches throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria were now left in peace, building themselves up, living in the fear of the Lord and filled with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to each verse of the psalm is, You, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat, and I shall have their fill. They shall praise the Lord, those who seek him. May their hearts live forever and ever. You, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. All the earth shall remember and return to the Lord. All families of the nations worship before him. They shall worship him, all the mighty of the earth. Before him shall vow all who go down to the dust. You, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. And my soul shall live for him, my children serve him. They shall tell of the Lord to generations to come, declare his faithfulness to peoples yet unborn. These things the Lord has done. You, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. The second reading is from the first letter of St. John. My children, our love is not just to be words or mere talk, but something real and active. Only by this can we be certain that we are children of the truth and be able to quieten our conscience in his presence whatever accusations it may raise against us, because God is greater than our conscience, and he knows everything. My dear people, if we cannot be condemned by our own conscience, we need not be afraid in God's presence, and whatever we ask him, we shall receive, because we keep his commandments and live the kind of life that he wants. His commandments are these, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another as he told us to. Whoever keeps his commandments lives in God, and God lives in him. We know that he lives in us by the Spirit he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's acclaim the Gospel. 
Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he cuts away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes to make it bear even more. You are pruned already by means of the words I have spoken to you. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself, thus but must remain part of the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, with me in him, bears fruit in plenty. For cut off from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is like a branch that's been thrown away. He withers. These branches are collected and thrown on the fire and are burnt. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask what you will and shall get it. It is to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit, and then you will be my disciples. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know, It's one of those gospel readings that really needs teasing apart. And I want to begin, naturally, right at the end. It's to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit. And then you'll be my disciples, you'll be my, my class, the ones I've instructed. I've given you something to think about and a way to live. But the fruit. Now, eating grapes as fruit after a meal wasn't really a big thing in the ancient world. If you had a vineyard, it wasn't to go and sell on the fruit counter at Tesco's. It was to make wine, 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 warming wine, rich red wine, wine that preserves, wine that you can even use on your wounds to clean them. Wine represents life. That's why we take wine, not Ribena or any other non-alcoholic drink. The whole point of the alcohol and the richness of the grape is this warmth and life, this symbol of life. That's why we use it in the Mass, because it becomes that life-giving blood of Christ in reality. But what he's saying here, if we're to burn much fruit, extending that, we are to give life to the world. Because what? It's what grapes and the fruit of the vine do. Now let's go back to the begin beginning. Jesus says, I am the true vine. I'm the source of these grapes. I'm the source, therefore, of this life. And my father's the vine dresser. Now I don't know about you. The next bits that come on make me feel a bit, oh, that's a bit threatening, isn't it? Because we're talking about pruning. And pruning involves cutting. Get your secateurs out, do your roses, you've just got about enough time. And that sounds threatening. It sounds, well, it doesn't sound nice at all. But it's the Father that's done that. And the pruning, our Lord says, you're pruned already. So they've already been through this process, and it's not painful. It's because you've listened to me. You're already pruned by means of the word I've spoken to you, the life-giving word. That's his way of pruning us, forming us. But he's using an image of everyday life in his own time. It's not a threat, it's illustrations that they can grab hold of. And then it continues in this very philosophical part. 
Make your home in me. So what's a home? Well, for me, my home is where I feel safe, where I feel protected, where I feel really free to be myself. My hobbies, my books, my readings. It's where you entertain friends and family. All these things are bundled up in home. And our Lord asks us to make our home, our place of freedom, our place of being our true selves without the exhausting mask we put on for the world. In Him we can leave the mask apart. In Him we can relax. In Him we can feel safe and protected. In Him we can commune with friends and family. And that's a very, very strong theme of the vine. One vine, our Lord, but lots and lots of bunches of grapes, us, if you like. But they're all connected. They're all one family. I've had a strong theme this past year about the intimacy and, and, and the way we are joined to God through Christ. And this is another image of that. We are joined to each other and to him. Because he's the vine of which we are part. And as a consequence, not as an imposition, not as a being called to do your duty, as a consequence of being his fruits, we become life bearers as he was the life bearer at the resurrection. We too give life to the world if we are close to him. We have the power to do that. We're not close to him. We have no power of giving life whatsoever. That's why it's our calling, our vocation, and our fulfillment in life. To live the Christian life so that others may see. So that through our poor efforts, God will take and spread that life through the world. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and of earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I have only one prayer this weekend, one bidding prayer. Our Lord says, ask and you shall receive. So let's ask him to intervene with the people of India who are suffering so badly. That he will protect them, ameliorate the situation. And more importantly, because ours is not a God of magic. Our God involves us in spreading peace. That we rich nations may do all we can in giving the help, the equipment, the techniques and advice. So that we may give them life. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. Let's ask our Lady, Queen of Peace, to pray with us and for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let's be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my many iniquities. Cleanse me of my sins. Let's pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Lord God, by this holy exchange of gifts, you share with us your divine life. Grant that everything we do may be directed by the knowledge of your truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through our Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter season, when Christ became our paschal sacrifice. He has made us children of the light rising to new and everlasting life. He has opened the gates of heaven to receive his faithful people. His death is our ransom from death. His resurrection is our rising to life. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world, while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, you are holy and to be glorified, O God. For you love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we're gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us. He opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And so, most loving and holy Father, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine. That they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more he gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come, come in glory. glory. <clears throat> and so, most loving and holy Father, as we celebrate this memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed unto us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and unto the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to a table, Lord, and firm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Malcolm our Bishop, and all your priestly people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Paul of the Cross, St. Joseph and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. <clears throat> through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have his encouragement to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our death, so that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Give each other a sign of his peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, world have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us such peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, oh Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our communion hymn is he is Lord. mysteries give us new purpose and bring us to a new life in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and protect you now and always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're praying for India, everyone. God bless. <laughs>